Can you hear me? I hope this reaches you. She will take you through the game and give you a lot of information because she has been here for a long time and she knows the world very well. So she has this quite constant presence and she's very kind and generous and will tell you what you need but not anything more than what you need. Um, so she's definitely someone to pay attention to. And she's um, very delicate and thoughtful but also very strong and has a lot of inner power but um, isn't afraid to show how vulnerable she is which is really cool. Liza P. I would describe Liza P as mysterious. Sophia, I've been waiting for you, searched all over the city of Krat to find you. The similarities between me and Sophia are few and far between, but we both like giving advice, and hers is definitely a lot better than my advice, but we will give it nonetheless. Um, she's braver and much stronger than I am and has got through a lot of hard times. So yeah, I, I do look up to her a bit. She's pretty cool. Ah, there you are. I've been looking all over for you. Cool, uh, I've got that line. Um, okay, so let's do it. Do I think what will capture the imagination is how gentle she is with her advice. She's not forcing you to do anything, and she's she's leaving a decision very much open to you. But she's just speaking from experience and warning you against certain things. And I feel like that will make people quite curious and want to kind of play on and use her because she doesn't, you know, push you into doing anything. Yes, I think my character is based on the blue fairy, but she's not like my character's not like a fairy. She's more kind of angelic and kind of quietly powerful and goddess-like. But she's also very human and very real. She doesn't try and be too strong. She shows her vulnerability. She's, she's very genuine, which is something I love about her. One word to describe Sophia would be brackets, gently, close brackets, powerful. So she's very powerful in ways that we don't always think of as people in power, but like, she has a very gentle use of power. I think that's, yeah, she's very powerful, but in an unusual way. That was not one word, it was a hundred. <laughs> I think it is based on Adventures of Pinocchio, and but the very original, nothing like the Disney version. The darker, more um, complicated original story. And I think it makes a great game because it's about humans and obviously puppets feeling like humans and becoming humans potentially and our relationship to things that aren't real but that feel quite real. So it's quite, yeah, on a lot of levels, it's quite a deep game that holds a mirror up to how we live, kind of, um, and what it's like to be human. So I think, it, yeah, it's very, um, it's a very intelligent game. I like the beginning lines when she's trying to get through to him and you hear her say it in the trailer like, can you hear me? That is the beginning of the game. She doesn't know if she will get through to his head and the rest of the game kind of relies. 
relies on him being able to hear her. And, and it's very cool because she has never been heard by anyone. And so I like those beginning lines. I hope this reaches you, can you hear me? Because there's a lot resting on him. But also she probably doesn't want to scare him. So yeah, those are my favorite lines. Can you hear me? Things did make me push myself, especially the more emotional stuff. I really like doing that kind of thing. And there was a lot of that. But a few things to do with the ending that I will leave to the mystery of, of the game. But it was just, it was really, really enjoyable. There's a lot of lines, and that was kind of a new thing in a way. But it's, yeah, it was really enjoyable. My message for the gamers is have fun, listen and pay attention to the detail that you're told. Ask as many questions as possible, and yeah, you're in for an amazing journey. So I hope it goes well. <laughs>